This instructional companion on the rolling wheel falls under the major topic, Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters, Properties of Solid Bodies, Kinematics, which is where this instructional camp, uh, companion comes from, Kinetics, Mechanisms and Power Transmission Systems, and Vibrating Systems. The chapter on Kinematics covers the many topics shown here. However, in particular, we're going to be looking at relative motion, general plane motion, and in the section rotation about a fixed axis, the MERM talks about the rolling wheel but only covers velocity. Here we're going to be talking about acceleration, and so uh, that uh, will be the, the subject. In the previous instructional companion on the rolling wheel, the discussion was limited to velocity because that's what the MERM was limited to. I wanted to continue with the last page on acceleration but just ran out of YouTube time. So this one's really going to be rolling wheel acceleration. The other was going to be turned into velocity. However, just to review quickly, here's our rolling wheel which had a velocity of the center of its wheel. It had some omega and uh, we wrote down the following equation. We wrote down the relative, relative motion equation where any point P on the, the rim of the wheel or anywhere uh, on the wheel is the velocity of the center of the wheel because we know a lot about that plus the velocity of, of that particular point relative to point C as if point C is fixed. And if point C is fixed all the points appear to rotate around uh, a circle here. So that's motion in a circle. Okay? And uh, one of the conditions was the no slip condition where if we call that point Q, uh, VQ equals zero and what that resulted in was that the velocity of the center of the wheel was R omega. Now we can write down a similar uh, relative motion equation in acceleration. We can write down, looks exactly the same, acceleration of P equals the acceleration of C plus the acceleration of P relative to C as if C is fixed. So now what you have is the motion acceleration or about C and, and this had just one term. This has two and we're going to see that on the next page. Okay. And remember that the first two um, the terms on the left and the right, these are the absolute terms. Running out of space down here. And these are the relative terms. Okay. And what we will find is that the acceleration of Q does not equal zero. One component does, but not the other. So let's look at the let's look separate this into uh, both rotation and translation on the next page. Okay. Well, let's as we normally have done before, we look at two uh, D plane motion or any motion as a sum of a pure translation plus a pure rotation. So let's look at uh, what each of these would look like. Okay, if we look at and call just like we did before uh, the center acceleration of C, well then all of the four, and we're just going to use the four basic points that we had for the velocity, and each one of these arrows should be the same length. So every point on, lost a little point there here. So all of them have the acceleration of the center of the wheel. So there's the pure translation over on the pure rotation here, well, we have if we're mo mo going around C and we're looking at the acceleration terms, then what we have is a combination of a uh, R alpha term and we had a R omega squared term. And then we had, if we're over here, then we've got a R alpha term, if there's an acceleration, angular acceleration, and we've got towards the center an R omega squared term. Then down here we have our R alpha term and we have our R omega squared. That's why Q doesn't have zero acceleration. It may have uh, alpha zero but not uh, always will have if it's rolling at all R omega squared. And then over here on this point we've got again R alpha and R omega squared. So we have two things going on 
uh, for the rotation, not just one like we had in velocity. So we've got an r alpha term tangent to the path, and we have an r omega squared term uh, towards the center. Okay, well, let's add those together and see what happens. Well, one of the things I had forgotten to do on the first page here is add the a sub c and added an alpha. Again, those are the positive directions there. But you probably knew that, but I wanted to complete that. So let's go back to the other page. So combining both the tr uh, pure translation plus the pure rotation, uh, things get a lot more complicated, uh, but uh, still very important here. Uh, there's an AC everywhere for all the four points. And then we add the, uh, let's just go around the top here. I think we label these um, uh, A up here, uh, B. Of course, the center is C, and over here is point D. And then a point, point Q down here. So up here at the top, you've got an AC and an R alpha uh, horizontal. You've got an R omega squared N. Uh, over here at point D, you've got AC to the right, R omega squared back to the left. Uh, and an R alpha perpendicular to that. Now down here at um, Q, well what we can say is while AQ, the total acceleration is not zero, we can show because of the no slip that the A acceleration of Q in the X direction is zero and what that gives is a similar relation that we had with velocity is that the acceleration of the center of the wheel will be R times alpha. But as you can see here, uh, AQ you want to call it y, is equal to r omega squared. You will always have some acceleration down there, uh, even if uh, alpha is equal to zero. Okay? And in fact, if alpha is equal to zero, the acceleration of the center is, uh, is zero, but you still have the r omega squared everywhere. Okay? Well, what we might do is take and apply that uh, to the problem that was uh, in the example in the MERM that we did in the previous instructional companion on the rolling wheel velocity, uh, the wheel, that, the 35 inch wheel rotating or moving at 35 miles an hour. Well, let's see what uh, the acceleration of the point P was. So let's go to another page here. Okay, the problem that was in the MERM, this was really just on velocity and the solution was using the instantaneous centers, which we showed required doing the, uh, the law of uh, cosines, which none of us wanted to warm up to. Well, let's suppose we have the same problem. We've got the velocity of the center of the wheel moving at 35 uh, miles per hour and let's assume that is a constant. And, uh, of course, the wheel was given as 35 uh, inches uh, in diameter. And this is sort of a solid wheel. Remember, a regular tire would be flatter on one side. And whereas we were asked for the velocity of P before, let's uh, find out what the acceleration of P is, both magnitude, direction, and let's find it in feet per second squared. Okay. So let's do that. So let's write down our relative motion equation. Well, uh, like we did in the previous instructional companion on velocity, we drew a little picture here. And in general, if we had this point P, we would have our translation A sub C and our velocity of P relative to C as if C is fixed, uh, our R alpha perpendicular in the direction that we, we look with, uh, assuming alpha positive clockwise, and R omega squared. Okay. However, and of course we, we learned that AC is equal to R alpha, uh, but AC equals zero, uh, therefore alpha equals zero. So the two terms A sub C and R alpha go away and what you're left with is the acceleration of P is merely equal to R omega squared. Okay. Okay. Well we know what uh, R is and if we want this in feet per second we can do, uh, do that. So let me save some YouTube time and write that out first. Well, our radius is half of a 35, 17.5 uh, 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 inches, and we've got to convert that to feet if we want feet per second squared, so 12 inches uh, per foot, divide by that. And then we found, uh, and this is from the other uh, instructional companion, we found that the uh, omega for this particular um, velocity, 35, was uh, 35.2 radians per second, and we're going to square that. So if we multiply all that out, what we will end up with is, and I, when I do units, I do this, feet per second squared. Make sure I've got units, and then get the calculator out. So if we do that, 17.5 divided by 12 times 35.2 squared, we get the following. 
Well, just to make sure where we were coming from, this is the slide from that previous instructional companion where we had found the velocity of p. We didn't need to find omega. Uh, the MERM did, but we didn't need to. But, it, but of course, VC equals R omega. We, we converted the 35 uh, miles per hour to feet per second, divided by R, came out with 35.2 radians per second, which we then converted and found that was 336 RPM. So that's in the previous instructional companion. So uh, that way we um, know where that came from. So again, we're back to this calculation. Well, when you multiply this out, and I did it a couple of times, <laughs> sort of startling, uh, you get uh, 1,000, close to if you round to the nearest one, 1,807 feet uh, per second squared. Very, very big number. Well, if you divide that by 32.2, you get about 56 Gs. So riding on the uh, rim of a 35-inch wheel at uh, 35 miles an hour, uh, there's a lot of Gs going on. So, do I believe uh, you're going to see too many acceleration problems? Probably not. The rolling wheel is probably the most common. That's why I wanted to do it. Uh, you could do um, something along with other mechanisms, like the slider crank, a, a future um, instructional companion. But there, I think just velocity, you can see how hard this gets quickly. So if you've got an acceleration problem of something like a slider crank, I think the answer is B. That's what I would do, even if I knew how to work it, not worth the time doing it. Well, I hope this has been instructive. I uh, just couldn't finish up. I uh, didn't feel like uh, leaving the rolling wheel without doing the acceleration was appropriate. So I hope you feel this was useful. Okay. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparation.